Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis, and today will be a quick episode covering some Tesla news. I also wanted to let you guys know I did have a family member pass away yesterday, so in the coming days we will have funeral proceedings, but I will do my best to get a video out every other day but we will have some family in town, so I will be spending time with them. Now, I wanted to mention that also because the last video I put out with regard to the Model Y roof flying off, just wanna tie a bow on that. A new article from Business Insider did come out today, and Nathaniel Chan was interviewed, and he said suddenly there was a lot of wind. It sounded like there was a window open. This was in an interview with Business Insider, and then suddenly the roof lifted off. As I mentioned, his father, Walter Chin, a 63-year-old cardiologist, was riding in the back seat trying to figure out the Tesla app when he heard the blowing. I looked up and the roof was gone. So for all of you people who are saying, oh, well, there's a woman driving. It was supposed to be a man's car. Well, here you go. He was in the back trying to figure out the system. There's your answer said the family was driving about 70 miles per hour on Interstate 580 when the roof detached. National Highway Patrol said they were not aware of any accidents resulting from the car part on the road. None of us knew how to react. We didn't scream or anything. There was an initial panic, and then we drove in a shocked silence all the way back, said Nathaniel Chen. The family returned to the Tesla Service Center in the new white Model Y, where the staff apologized, told them they hadn't seen anything like this before, offered to service the car, and gave the family a rental. The Chens declined to have the Model Y serviced and said choosing to return it all together. And then, one last note, on Monday, Walter Chen said that he spoke with a Tesla rep who said that everything was done correctly when manufacturing the car. To me, that was more concerning. So, it seems that this was a substantiated event. It was not FUD as so many people in the comments and on Twitter were claiming. And I wanted to say this because I've seen a trend being on Twitter for the last few months in the Tesla community. It is becoming very toxic uh, in some ways where people just blatantly defending Tesla no matter what's going on and it's not healthy like it used to. I'm all for fighting the FUD, but not every negative thing that comes out on Tesla is FUD. Now, yes, we'll, we can say most of it is, but not all of it is. So anyways, read that article if you want more information. Uh, I do still think that it was a legitimate claim, and it was just a family who doesn't use social media, who had bigger fish to fry than getting great footage of the roof that was gone and uploading the dash cam footage, which they probably barely know how to use the infotainment system as they were literally just driving the car homes. But I just wanted to put a bow on that one and to remind everybody that Tesla is not perfect. We'll leave it at that. But moving on from that, we get some more news about Tesla battery use at Giga Berlin and their supposed battery bifurcation plans in a tweet saying, Berlin will use 4680 cell with structural battery pack in front and rear single piece cast things, also a new paint system. We have heard this before. A lot of new technology will happen in Berlin, which means significant production risk. Fremont and Shanghai will transition in around two years when the new tech is proven. Elon later added, we do expect to make heavy use of LFP for medium range cars and stationary storage. So as you may or may not know, these LFP cells are much cheaper and they use zero cobalt, which everyone has been trying to get to zero. And so I think most of us kind of assumed this and saw this coming, but with the news coming out yesterday that Giga Shanghai would start to export Model Ys to the German area, uh, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm not sure why they would do that, especially if now people know that the Model Y is made in Germany, will have the new battery cells and the new cell to pack technology. It would make sense that they would just wait another, you know, six, nine, 12 months, however long it takes to get their production vehicle from Giga Berlin instead of from Giga Shanghai. But the best thing I saw was that perhaps the Model Y from Shanghai would be using LFP for the standard range or standard range plus version. And then the Giga Berlin would be the performance and the long range version. That does make some sense, but hopefully we'll learn some more in the coming weeks. If you wanted to see a picture of a supercharger stall with the cover off, here you go. And so in yet another leaked email from Elon, this one is saying that Tesla does have the chance to produce 500,000 cars for 2020. This is not deliver, this means produce. So in the email it said, it will be tough but super exciting if we can exceed half a million cars made in a single year for the first time in Tesla history. When we started Tesla just over 16 years ago, I never thought we would get this far. 
But thanks to your hard work and ingenuity, we actually have a chance of making half a million cars in a single year. Wow, that is so incredible. This all comes down to quarter four. Please take whatever steps you can think of to improve output while increasing quality. And the last bit of news I wanted to get out to you guys today before I have to go to some family events later today. Tesla has a new job posting for 3D manufacturing, which is very exciting. So taking a look at the job posting, it would be in Sparks, Nevada. It's a full-time job. Tesla is seeking a highly motivated individual interested in acquiring and expanding the skill sets necessary to operate 3D printing equipment in a rapidly growing additive manufacturing operations. You can take a look at the key responsibilities and the requirements and then the desired skills and qualifications. The job posting doesn't give a lot of detail on what exactly they would be doing. Perhaps we will get more information in the future, but this is definitely an exciting revelation as Tesla continues to look for ways to expand and improve in their manufacturing prowess. But that will wrap it up for today's episode of Tesla News. Once again, thank you for your patience over the past few days and in the coming few days as we deal with the loss of a family member and our family is in town. As mentioned, I will do my best to get some important news information out to you guys every other day, hopefully, but just keep that in mind. That's what's going on. So thank you for your patience. Thank you to all of our patrons. I really appreciate your monetary support. Definitely helps balance the ups and downs of ad revenue. But with that, I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in the next video.